Welcome to Snowmobiler TV. Today's tour spins the track out west as we catch up with an expert to discuss the perils of avalanches and our need for extra caution. The test team saddles up on some 2013 models, the new 800 race replica from CAT, and the upgraded hard-running Yamaha Nitro. And we deliver some helpful info about ethanol and fuel and what it means to your engine. It's all good, so let's ride. STV is sponsored by Yamaha four-stroke snowmobiles. Why do you, Yamaha? By G-Max Helmets. There's a G-Max for everyone. And by ski -Doo. Better rides, better riders. As mountain sled technology has evolved, it has opened the door to the depths of the backcountry unlike ever before. Riders are now taking advantage of the untracked powder in remote regions that has previously remained unexplored. And with this access comes great responsibility for them to be aware of the avalanche dangers that lurk on the slopes. Well, you can kind of sum up the avalanches. They're affected by four main factors. The first one is terrain, the second one is weather, and there's third is snowpack, and the last one is the human factor. And uh, it's pretty easy to get your head around most of those concepts. Some of them are, you know, the, the weather and the snowpack can be very complicated, but from a user's point of view, it, it's pretty simple. And so when we focus on terrain, we focus on avalanche terrain. You know, it's gotta be steep enough to slide. You know, are you in avalanche terrain? Unfortunately, that's where we like to play the most. So my motto is if it looks fun, it's probably avalanche terrain. Now, technically, avalanches happen between 30 and 45 degrees, um, the steepness of the slope, with kind of the magic number being 37 to 38. Okay, so, um, for reference, um, 32 to 33 degrees is about the equivalent of a black run in a regular ski area. So, we're talking pretty steep, but for advanced riders, it's that's not steep at all. And that's the kind of terrain that we like to be, whether we're going up or down or cross whatever you know that's the kind of stuff we like to be in so just the fact that that's where we want to go you know there's kind of one strike against us already the first rule of riding in the mountains is being properly prepared at the bare minimum uh, everybody needs rescue gear and that includes these three things you need an avalanche transceiver or beacon um, probe and a shovel if you have anything less than that you can't really affect a rescue um, you have to have all three things and most importantly you've got to know how to use them you know, the beacon technology is getting really good and they're getting very easy to use, but if you don't practice it, you're no good. Staying safe from the avalanche terrain is really about getting buy-in from your riding group and getting training within your whole riding group. Because we're moving so fast, we're covering so much terrain, it's not the time to be teaching your friend how to be safe. They have to have the same eyes as you. They have to be able to communicate quickly and effectively and know what to look for. And it's the whole group needs to have that training and continue it. It's not a rubber stamp. You don't take one avalanche course and say you're good. It's about maintaining the training, reading those bulletins, understanding them and putting them into action, looking at the terrain, learning more and more about terrain, using your experience, grow, grow, grow. There's so much out there. Going in prepared is mandatory for sure, but the hardest part comes from the need for each individual to make the right decisions while out riding. As a group, you must plan, and as singles, you must make the right decisions to ensure the plans keep everyone out of harm's way. I factored down to three. I mean, we need to plan. We need to think about what we're, what we're up to that weekend or that day that we're going sledding. We need to plan a few days in advance and the night before. And then we need to think. So as we're riding, we're gathering puzzle pieces. We're looking at the snowpack. We're looking at the weather. We're looking at our riding group. And we're gathering these puzzle pieces and thinking, what does this mean to our day? And then we need to act. We need to have travel habits in place and act on those travel habits to keep ourselves safe. It's really hard to figure out, you know, when you go out with a bunch of guys, uh, there's a dynamic there, and uh, sometimes it's a positive dynamic, other times it's not. Some people have you know, uh, bigger ambitions or better riders, you know, um, but really the, the group should uh, be really careful about the decisions they make, and you know, the, you're only as strong as the, weak, the weakest link or the weakest rider, and uh, you know, if um, you're accessing terrain that's more advanced, 
uh, you're, you're looking for trouble from, from the weaker riders. And, you know, anybody can get in trouble out there. That's, that's the thing. But you just want to be really cognizant of how you make decisions. You know, riding in big, big groups, it's tough to make decisions, you know. And uh, uh, everybody, everybody needs to be heard, express their, express their feelings about what the situation is. And, and you really need to trust your gut. So if something doesn't feel right, you should probably, probably reevaluate the situation and, and uh, maybe make a, make a different plan for the day. It's all about timing when it comes to avalanches, really. There's times when everything's good to go and times when you really need to play carefully and choose your slopes wisely. first snowmobile was the Articat 100. What year was it released? A. 1962, B. 1966, or C. 1968? The answer when we return. Coming up, does your engine oil make a difference? 